Hello Techies. Before we start the video let's know about UpTalk. UpTalk is a live, interactive platform for software training, furnishing robust personalities, who could take on universal business platforms. So, let's know about Workday LMS briefly. Workday LMS inspires learning from a rigid, unconnected experience to one that is relevant, demand-driven, and personalized. Workday LMS integrates peer learning, professional development, and needs training so workers can learn like never before. The topics we will cover in this video are Create Security Group Learning Administration Learning Module To know more about the latest and trending technologies, watch other videos on the UpTalk channel. Please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel to know more about new technologies. This video will be covered by Mr. Amit. Now. Let's not wait further and get started. So first what we'll do is we'll see whether learning administrator security group is there or not. So. What will be a report and what will be a task here? Because it says report, but it seems like a task, right? View security group is a um, view security group is a task actually, not a report. Okay, it said report there when you searched. Okay, so there is no security group here, so we'll try to create uh, the security group now. So <clears throat> the learning administrator is a kind of user-based security group that we'll be creating because user-based security group will be assigned to the employees. Employees in the sense, learning administrators. Let's say I'm, okay, I'm actually defined as a learning administrator. So that user-based user security group called learning administrator should be assigned to my user profile. So what we need to select, user-based security group we need to select. User-based security group. Learning administrator. <clears throat> Administered by security group will give it as security administrator because security administrator will have a, so um, in workday complete security administrator will be workday security will be controlled by security administrator so whichever user based security group or role based security group that you create you will be you'll be assigning the security administrator as a kind of security group which is a mm -hmm. kind of administered security group okay so when you say user based security group so that means that you are manually putting in the users to this security group but when it is role based, that means that it is dynamic uh, in nature, right? Yes, role based security group will be assigned uh, at org level or position level, but role based mm -hmm. uh, user based security group will be assigned at user level manually. Okay. If you wanted to, based on your supervisor organization, it will be automatically get inherited. But if you wanted to manually break that inheritance, you can uh, actually break that and uh, have have it assigned to manually. But all the downstream members also will get the same uh, inheritance upright. Let's say you are the manager. Okay, mm -hmm. so now uh, for you, a kind of uh, one manager role is defined. Okay, so we'll create mm -hmm. a role based security group called manager. Okay, and mm -hmm. manager will be having. Um, some uh, specific role based permissions and all so the system mm -hmm. access and approval things and all no? mm -hmm. basically managers will be accessing so based on your position you got this one and uh, uh, your team members below so they are kind of uh, associate level or developer level or ma you know lead level resource so based mm -hmm. on their position um, this role based security will restrict her. so it will not inherit mm -hmm. But if you are hiring any kind of manager under you, okay, you became a senior manager and you are hiring a manager under you. So your uh, manager security access will get inherited to the manager uh, person, you know, who will be hired under you uh, because, uh, you know, the role is manager and your role is manager and uh, your security roles you know, will get inherited to that particular manager. 
but will not get inherited to any developer or associate any kind of downgrade resources and all. Mm -hmm. So now I've created learning administrator user based security group. Now this can be assigned to any user, but we have not assigned any learning permissions here. We've just created a learning administrator, but have not assigned any learning related permissions. Around. So in order mm -hmm. to give complete security access to learning administrator to access mm -hmm. any security element related to learning, what we'll do is we'll assign domains to that particular, uh, uh, you know, user mm -hmm. basic. Mm -hmm. So okay. go to security group, maintain domain permissions for security group. Mm -hmm here you will be getting what access to modify what access to view and all put and get is something related integration will not uh, since this user will not be managing any integrations will not be giving those access but modify mm. access view access whatever related to learning that are there will be giving because a learning administrator is a kind of super user will be having complete control on learning application okay mm -hmm. so just enter domain named learning you'll be getting all the domains related to learning. Okay. Mm. <laughs> learning access. We'll just see whether all these are learning. Yeah, so all these are learning uh, delivered uh, learning related domains. Mm. So what we'll do is we'll give complete um, modify access to all these learning domains. And also view access to all these domains. So you clicked on control A and clicked on space yes. bar, is it? Yes. So we have given complete. Uh, all mm -hmm. the learning domains are assigned to this learning administrator and click on OK. Now there is one activity that you need to perform in order to take your uh, security settings uh, or security setup become effective. What you need to do, you need to activate the security. OK so that mm -hmm. your security changes will get effective. So you got all the domains which are assigned to the learning administrator, all the domains you know which we got selected and populated here. Okay. <clears throat> so now this is activated. Hmm. Now we can choose any of the user <clears throat> and assign this learning administrator security. <clears throat> hmm. I just took one random name.
we can pick any of the user for whom you know we need to grant learning administrator access. Mm -hmm. John Paul and <clears throat> so to John Paul and um, Todd, you know, we have assigned learning administrative security group and they should be having control in performing any action related to learning. Like that, when you're actually implementing, you'll be having a list of uh, administrators from business, and probably you need to do the same activity what we have done. So you need to actually mm -hmm. create one user-based security group and assign all the relevant domains to that appropriate person, you know, whoever mm -hmm. you wanted to make a learning administrator, you'll be doing. Okay. <clears throat> So that's how you know, typically manage your security. So right now I've actually shown um, one user base, but depends upon your organization requirement to whom you know, you're actually implementing or to the customer for whom you're working. They may have, they may be having different security requirements. They may want to, you know, uh, sometimes they wanted to reduce some kind of permissions to a learning administrator. They wanted to have uh, one more kind of instructor uh, wanted to give specific permissions to instructor uh, rather than giving complete um, security access to learning administrator. So few responsibilities that instructor has to perform. So you need to create one user-based security group for instructor and um, assign you know, some um, instructor-related domains to that instructor and assign if there are any people who are identified as instructors for whom for those people you will be assigning this instructor user based security group who will be having different permissions to manage uh, course instructions and uh, administer any kind of instructor related activities and all that instructor will be having permissions rather than giving complete control to uh, learning administrator you also you can also have such kind of uh, you know security setups based on Hmm. So that's how we typically manage uh, security groups creation in uh, workday. And um, hmm. now, you know, what we'll see is we'll pick few of uh, core domains in learning and provide uh, access to the learning administrator of what we have created now. Okay. So, ad administrator campaigns we have seen, right? Domain. So, which hmm. usually manages all the campaign related activities and all. <laughs> so basically any module implementation first needs to be configured with domains and security. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you are actually implementing the learning module, so if your implementation partner or if you are any kind of associated with the uh, work to implementation, so what do you have to do first? You need to actually figure out what are all the domains related to learnings are available in the tenant and to whom we need to assign those domains. That is one area that you need to focus before you go for configurations. And what mm -hmm. are the you know, what are the security groups that needs to be created with all the relevant permissions that you need to prepare a kind of list. And once you complete that kind of configuration, security and domains, then you can go for uh, extra configuration related to tenant. So that is what we are doing now. Okay, so initially we've discussed some basics and um, so we have identified a few domains and those domains, you know, will be assigning to learning administrator and similarly, you'll be giving, you'll be getting a kind of uh, security group uh, creation requirements from your uh, customer organization or partner. You know, they'll be giving a kind of, you know, we wanted to have a, a learning administrator. We wanted to have, a, a, you know, instructor. We wanted to have um, affiliation manager as a kind of a role-based security group. And all this kind of, you know, four, five to six kind of uh, uh, security groups they'll be having as per organization requirement. And you need to set up those security groups with the relevant permissions as how we know we have done now. Mm -hmm. And and once you have those security groups, and what are all the domains that need to be assigned, so we'll be seeing now. 
so now we have okay. created learning administrator right so the learning administrator should have obviously uh, so we have given complete access to learning administrator so that shouldn't be a kind of case you know since we have uh, selected all the domains and should have complete access now in order to actually go for a domain based security group how you can assign those security groups is pick up uh, that particular domain Go to this particular domain. Obviously, the learning admission, whatever we've assigned to this domain, should be already existing. But we'll make sure. Okay. So this policy itself is not enabled, suspended. Sometimes when you're firstly, uh, when you're firstly doing any kind of security setups, if policy is not enabled, you need to just make it enabled. What is yeah. enable uh, security policy so that you, that domain will be particularly enabled to use uh, for any kind of usage before that you know there is no security group assigned you know, that was actually uh, not enabled now we have enabled so what we'll do is once we assign security group and as a, make it as a activate <laughs> that will be automatically get enabled so what we'll do is I, we'll didn't, assign I, didn't, get, I didn't get that actually so, so there is uh, nothing we, in a, uh, <clears throat> so when you actually uh, you know go for uh, implementation few set delivered uh, uh, set domains you know that are provided by workday will not be assigned to any of the security group okay and um, so when it is not assigned to any of the security group or when it is not enabled even though you assign to any of the security group will not work actually because that security policy itself is not enabled so what i've done is i've enabled it now have enabled and I'm act I'm assigning learning administrator to that domain and will be activating so once I activate that one that policy will get enabled actually no, uh, see this is a uh, domain right which we added to le learning administrator we are adding it now okay we are adding it now but you selected yeah. control a and you selected everything right that time it was not there it was, this was not uh, enabled, right? Uh, the security policy was not enabled. And uh, that is the reason why it was not part of the uh, domains, you know, that needs to be assigned to the user. Since this uh, administer campaign uh, domain was not uh, enabled, actually, suspended. So this, uh, that's the, the reason why. Hmm. What is the difference between domain that, and domain security policy? Both are same. So domain security policy is nothing but where you'll be assigning domains to the security groups. You'll be giving uh, permissions to the security group, which will mm -hmm. allow that security group to view something or to manage something or to modify something. That is domain security policy. Domain security policy, domains will be part of the security. Business process security policy, BPs will be part of the security. You'll be providing BP uh, business process security it is to the dom uh, to the security group for domains you'll be assigning domains to that security group that is only you know a single concept that can be so, considered so ideally we created a security group and for the security group we added domains now we are coming yes. to the domain and adding the security group Yes, this is also one way, you know, that we can actually uh, basically, you know, um, support request, you know, you'll be getting. So <clears throat> you'll be getting uh, if you are learning administrator or if you are security administrator. So learning mm -hmm. admin may come to you, you know, hey, I'm not able to access campaigns for some mm -hmm. reason, you know, that was not actually as assigned to that, uh, my security group. Mm -hmm. So what you'll be doing, you'll be getting to that particular domain, you'll see list of the security groups that are assigned to the domain you see uh, hr only hr administrator was there and learning administrator was not there what you will do then you will edit that particular domain and add the security group and then activate that one so that learning administrator will be will be provided with access to the campaigns actually 
in that way even you know at domain why domain level you know you can actually get uh, those security groups assigned but ideally when you're actually implementing um, uh, learning you know the initial stage you'll be actually creating user based security group and role based security group and uh, whatever domains that needs to be provided will be you know as how i've done i've done uh, control a and i've uh, selected that one and the reason why this um, administrator campaign was not what was not part of the list is this domain was not um, enabled actually this was suspended that was the reason why it was not part of uh, the domains that was selected uh, uh, in the group actually how do we know how do we see what all are not enabled so we have uh, basically when you are actually you know assigning domains is actually a kind of manual way okay so you need to actually go into the domain and see yeah. uh, the security group has to be assigned or not okay so when you are going you know you will be you will be identifying whether or you know the, uh, the domain is uh, enabled or not if you go here you can see here it is now enabled if you disable that one that will get disabled so whenever you are actually going to any of the domain which are uh, ideally when uh, if the module is actually implemented you'll see that enabled but uh, when you are going for implementation you need to actually enable all those uh, administrator uh, uh, actually domains you know you need to first enable all those things because um, first time you are actually assigning all the security groups to, to those domains right so it is not used those domains were not used so ideally when you're first time you know so implementing any module that particular domains will not be assigned to any of the security groups. So first you'll be enabling those domains and then act, assign security groups to that one and make it uh, available for usage. So this mm -hmm. domain I know was not actually uh, enabled because uh, you know I don't think uh, um, this tenant was used by me in my learner previous learning trainings and uh, uh, and also previous uh, uh, you know uh, people who are actually managing they didn't use this domain I believe and that's mm -hmm. the reason why this was not actually enabled and now when I was actually doing I got to know that uh, this domain was not enabled actually and I have uh, enabled it now and uh, assign learning administrator security group and in order to become this as effective what you need to do is you need to actually activate this one clear makes sense so after enabling you have to activate again yes now because you have assigned the learning administrator security group no Mm -hmm. So there is no way to find out what all in a, a dis, what all security groups are disabled. Sorry, not security no. groups. Domains are disabled. Right, manually you have to find out whether you have to search and find out whether it's enabled or disabled. The, that appears only during implementation. So because uh, mm -hmm. when you're actually implementing, what are the domains that are needed for you? You'll be actually enabling mm -hmm. them and uh, you'll be assigning security groups to them. But uh, in future, any if you came to know any of the new domains that you wanted to use, then you need mm -hmm. to actually enable them as well. Okay. So if I want to find out all the domains if you want to search all the domains in for learning how do i do that mm -hmm. you need to actually go for uh, uh, you know uh, domain colon uh, related learning or generally you know workday implementer or workday people who are actually implementing will be giving will be getting a, a kind of checklist so who are actually implementing they'll be getting a kind of checklist from workday these are all the domains that needs to be part of workday kind of things you know you'll be getting so when mm -hmm. uh, implementer or when workday is implementing for you and if you are part of any kind of development team they'll be giving mm -hmm. you a kind of checklist a kind of spreadsheet these are all the security groups these are all the domains that are available in workday which needs to be configured in your tenant mm -hmm. but there is no way that you can identify before implementation you'll be not able to uh, know what are all the domains that are available because uh, until unless you know you have some kind of experience in implementing workday you'll be not having control on the domains you know that needs to be granted for your tenant yeah. Just so if you're after part of an easy team or if you're mm -hmm. after implementation, you want to search as a as an admin. 
you need to actually create a you know so, uh, say uh, customer report if you wanted to know any kind of domains you know, that are related to learning you need to create um, the customer report in order to do those things or you need to actually go to the search bar domain learning okay everything will be appended by learning is it yes yeah <clears throat> View domains, is it? No. We'll be getting all the list of uh, learning related uh, domains. Okay. Got it. Okay. So, so all these we tasks you just uh, need to get used to and get and I mean remember is it there is no place where you can see all the tasks which are available tasks and reports like everything is searchable right for a person who is searchable, new to work, uh, yeah. new to work day, so if day, you day, have day, uh, day. Yeah, there will be a kind of one um, sitemap here because this is a kind of implementer account. You know, the sitemap is not there. But if you have any your own workday account, what you can do is you can go to your profile. Okay. If you go to your profile here, you'll be seeing one item called sitemap. Okay. Okay. So sitemap. Okay. When you click on the sitemap, it will be taking you to the list of all the tasks. That are you know um, where you know you can access those tasks, whether it is uh, benefits, whether it is recruiting, learning, core HCM, payroll, anything. All the modules, all the available modules in Workday, will be getting you okay. the list of all the tasks, so to which you know you have access. So if you oh, click on benefits, yeah. you'll be if, if you filter with benefits, it will be getting a list of tasks where you know you have control to perform any access to that particular task. If you click on learning, learning category, it will be getting a list of all learning tasks where you have access to those tasks. So like that, you know, if you go to the sitemap, it will be getting you all the modules that are available in your workday. And if you select any of the item, it will be providing a list of tasks to which you know you have access to. In that way, yes. initially, you know, when you, if you're not if you're not aware of uh, performing any task, or if you don't know, you know what tasks that are available in Workday related to learning, uh, the sitemap will help you. Go to the sitemap, select learning as a category, and it will get okay. you list of reports and list of tasks that are available for you to access. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have your uh, any own Workday account, just uh, try that one and let me know if you're able to. If you have sitemap you'll definitely that is all there is also domain for that one so if that domain is access to any of the users mm. <clears throat> okay, okay. got it so if any of the domain you know will be assigned to landing page sitemap is there okay so if this okay. uh, domain you know is assigned to any of the uh, security group that is associated to you you'll be able to see that sitemap in this list okay you will be probably you'll be getting sitemap here if the domain is if you have um, you know in your own organization if uh, any security team is not assigned to you you can actually ask, ask them to get that sitemap you know assigned to the security group that is associated to you so that you'll be seeing that sitemap here and when you click on that sitemap you'll be getting the list of uh, tasks for that particular module which you wanted to access which you're not aware you'll be able to know what are the tasks that are available in workday Okay, okay, great. Okay. So that is about, you know, um, uh, now we have seen um, uh, campaigns you know, that we have assigned to uh, learning administrator. And similarly, let's see domain. Learning access. This is one thing, you know, where you will be assigning a uh, list of um, users, you know, whom you wanted to actually assign, uh, um, uh, provide learning access. Okay. Learning access in the sense, um, in well, learning also will be an available work plate, is it? Yes, so you can see here, this domain provide access to learning self-service task, workers with access to this domain can search the learning catalog 
view course information, set their learning preference, complete learning service, and view their progress in programs, courses, and lessons. So this is basically assigned for all the employees who actually yeah, yeah. wanted to be yeah. as a learner in your system to, <clears throat> to yeah. access any of the learning course, enroll to them, and view their transcript history, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, view learning catalog, all the list of courses and all. Mm -hmm. So to provide them access, you will be actually granting uh, those permissions to the, the uh, particular security group here. So let's see. Yeah. Go to that particular domain. Edit security policy. Basically, what you'll do is, since you know we have assigned, uh, we have not manually assigned because we have, this was part of enable the domain. Automatical learning administrator got access to this one, and mm. since you know this is self-service task, which every employee should be having access. What you'll be doing is, there is a security group called employee as self. Mm. <laughs> ESS employee self service huh? yes yes employee self service uh, employee as self service all employees also is there so if you select oh. all employees you'll be this learning access you'll be getting for all employees in the system okay mm -hmm. or if when you, you want to also modify, give access to... when Sorry? you say modify what will happen they'll be able to edit the course content if you want if you don't want it to give any permissions to employees you know to actually edit any kind of course basically will not give uh, modify access to all employees only learning administrator will be having modifies but look, for all employees you'll be just giving view access to view anything related to anything but modify means let's say if uh, they're going to any course and they'll be getting an option there okay edit uh, this particular mm -hmm. course and all. Oh, so we'll be not okay. we'll be not giving this modify access to employees so only yeah. learning administrator will be having access and yeah. uh, in that way you know for all the um, learning control you know your learning access is a kind of domain which will be which will be getting you permissions to all the self service related tasks to enroll to view the course to yeah. uh, you know the get into catalog browse the learning content and to view their transcript history all these you know self owned tasks you know you'll yeah. be getting access mm -hmm. and similarly if yeah. you wanted to make contingent worker to be part of a learning application and if you wanted to provide them access as well so you need to actually select <clears throat> so contingent, contingent worker will not be a normal employee right will not be a normal employee but most of the organizations will provide a restriction to them to access their learning application because um, you know they'll be a kind of third-party resources will they mm -hmm. not come under um, you know, compliance policy to go through the training training items or learning items that are uh, you know designed for employees so but in case in case you know mm -hmm. if uh, um, there is a policy that you know even contingent workers should take all the compliance courses that we are assigning right. you can actually right. <clears throat> select this thing and probably they'll be or uh, if uh, you don't want it to provide them access to all the self-service tasks of self learning and uh, probably if uh, <clears throat> you wanted to create one separate application for them okay so you need to subscribe on a learning application for them called extended enterprise learning module you know, within workday learning there is a there is a separate module called extended enterprise learning module okay so that specific module is actually used for uh, you know mostly designed for contingent workers third party agencies and for the employees you know who does not have a workday account to access the learning system you know that module is actually designed so when you are actually implementing workday if you wanted to go for extended enterprise learning module you can subscribe for that and workday will be enabling that module to you and uh, you can get all the contractors into that uh, learning model so that they'll be not having access to workday in this way in this way if you're doing your, how it will work is they need to have a workday account so all employees will obviously have a workday account right so they'll be having yeah. a workday account they'll be logging into workday and uh, because of the permissions that you are giving to learning access here they'll be they will they'll be able to access anything related to learning and for yeah. contingent workers some organizations you know uh, will be creating a contingent worker account to them and uh, if they are actually hide 
to create only reports they'll provide access to only reports they'll not provide uh, you know any uh, permissions to view any other employee profile or uh, to view their compensation to view other employee compensation all these things are for contractors uh, access will be restricted to only their job area wherever you know they are responsible to work only to that particular piece of work you know will be assigning a security but in case in case you know if your organization is requiring contingent workers should also undergo any kind of compliance training internally what you'll be doing is it is subscribing for external enterprise learning module extended enterprise learning the name itself says extended extended enterprise learning module you will be extending learning application to uh, employees who are not part of uh, to contingent workers who are not part of in work day so you will be dumping all those uh, contingent workers into that extended enterprise learning module so they will be having only access to learning module so they will be not having access to any other piece of uh, task in work day they'll just uh, log into that extended enterprise learning work day application if you the view the course take the course and complete the course that's it they can perform anything related to learning but not um, you know other items that are not related to learning so in that way okay. there is a module called extended enterprise learning which you can subscribe but this is also one way what i'm doing you can actually give if there is a policy that you can actually have uh, even contingent workers to take training you will actually make them as a kind of uh, uh, you know security group under uh, uh, learning access and once you click on okay and activate this uh, contingent workers and employees should be able to perform any self service related task to or learning actually now we have added uh, those two security groups what is the uh, activity that we need to do we need yeah. to activate them so whatever uh, security changes that you are making make sure that all the activation uh, you know you need to perform yeah i have a couple of questions on this uh, yeah. now you told uh, uh, workers are normal employees who have work day account and yeah. uh, contractors or someone who will yeah. normally not not have the work day account will not will have work day account but will be restricted mm -hmm. With the specific access, like they'll not have uh, all employee-related. Uh, you know, if you are an employee, you'll be having uh, all your uh, different permissions. Right, you have uh, permissions to go to the company, your compensation, and view your compensation. Yeah, that is permission, have, uh, right? Yeah, that, that is, is permission. permission. What but do you mean by work worker, day account and not having work day account? Without having work day account, they will not be able to log in only, right? Yes. So basically, you know, if you are an employee. okay if you are an employee when a company is making you offer when company is offering you okay so yeah. your employee will get generate okay right. so your employee will get generate and the moment you know offer is released to you so you will be getting a kind of uh, urls to you to perform onboarding activities and all okay right. so right. they will be sending you a url and will be asking you to enter your communication address your email all those things you know he will be ordering you before when they are hiring you itself you know your employee is generated and you are an employee of that uh, work day account but when you are hiring a contingent worker employee will not be generating okay onboarding process will not start they'll manually create a contingent worker account after you know you actually uh, perform any kind of discussions and all when you are hiring a contingent worker uh, when contingent worker inside the organization the you know will manually create a contingent worker account and uh, give specific permissions to that one so when contingent worker is uh, in work day what will be doing is will be giving access to that particular piece of the domain which that contingent worker is responsible for, for doing any activities so that you will be doing uh, when you hire a contingent worker but that is not the case with the employee the employee will be having a lot of the things you know that they need to go in work day they need to actually you know they'll be having a kind of job requisition id you know job requisition is nothing but for the position the job requisition is assigned so the if you are uh, if you are hiring to any of the position so you are qualified for that position right that position is created for you when that position is created for you and job requisition will be assigned to that position job requisition is assigned job profile will be there a lot of things are there you know for an employee job profile if you are hiring as a work day developer okay so uh, work day developer position has to be created when work day developer position has to be created job profile work day developer job profile has to be created so all these things you know will be linked to employee employee so if you wanted if you are becoming an employee all these things has to be performed then you need to have a position 
uh, within the system before they hire you. If they wanted to create a position, there needs to be a profile that needs to be saying these are all the job responsibilities that this um, this position will be performing. And that when job profile is creating you, what kind of salary that needs to be assigned to the job profile? So based on that position, salary will be compensation will be assigned. So all these things will be there for an employee. But for contingent worker, that will be in all these cases will not be applicable, right? So they'll just um, you know create a contingent worker ID and have them in the system, give the specific security group. That's it. All the compensation, anything you know, will be uh, taken so, taken care by outside of workday, right? Yeah. So ideally, the way they are going to be created will be different. That's all, na. But what, yes. Uh, will have the work uh, access okay now we'll be having okay. access but permissions will yeah. be different permissions will be different now yes. uh, what is the you means is there any cost difference of a normal workday account employee workday account and extended enterprise license if customer has to take as you said is there a cost difference yeah. there yes. because yes. they don't have to take extended enterprise uh, this one only right they can only use the normal uh, user license yeah. what they have they can, they can go they can create sure. the uh, employees the users as uh, contingent workers and they can restrict yes. their access what is the they difference they can do okay so if you're actually you know the, <clears throat> so i'll tell you in my experience you know what i've done okay so i've, I've implemented um, a learning module for one of the large work the customer okay? okay so what they are doing is um, so when i was implementing workday to them <clears throat> they were actually you know available live with workday only for uh, united states okay so mm -hmm. only for united states they are actually using workday but they have mm -hmm. their presence globally okay their company is okay. operating in canada their companies are operating in London, uh, you know, Mexico, mm -hmm. India, uh, Australia. So to all these uh, countries, you know, their companies are operating. But right. they are using Workday as their HR system only for US employees, but not uh, for all other countries. When they plan right. to actually implement Workday learning, what they have decided is, yes, so for all US employees, since we have uh, Workday live with all uh, US employees, we'll be actually uh, implementing uh, uh, Workday learning Obviously, when workday learning implemented, all employees will be part of uh, workday learning activities. That's a kind mm -hmm. of default. When all the US employees, um, I know, when all the contingent workers who are part of United States, okay, so there you need to actually decide, okay, so whether contingent worker who is in the US should be part of uh, our uh, workday system as an as a contingent worker. That is one thing, mm -hmm. you know, one question tag you'll be getting. Now, another mm -hmm. question. So we are live with the United States and we are implementing workday learning in UK, in United States, that's okay. But we have all our employees globally, how we can actually assign our learning catalogs, our learning courses to all these employees who are not part of workday system. Okay, so now there comes in a module called extended enterprise learning module employees who are not part of workday. Okay uh, System can be actually get into workday learning as a extended enterprise learner Okay, so you will be okay. subscribing for that module called extended enterprise learning module and the workday will be you know charging separate cost for that one and once you enable that one all uh, UK Canada Australia India Mexico you know where uh, workday is not live but just you wanted to get these employees to only perform a learning related task you'll be actually getting a extended enterprise learning module and dump all other country employees into extended enterprise and actually a single task what uh, learning administrator will be doing when they are actually enabling uh, or releasing a campaign what they'll be doing they'll be just doing uh, one task for employees one campaign for ca these um, you know uh, extended enterprise learners so so that you know they can uh, you know distribute uh, one compliance course to all the country globally right so they can access uh, they can track the completion status they can view you know um, if there are any kind of uh, course issues and all they can view for uh, on behalf of you know extended enterprise learner so all these things then they can be do so in that scenario once you have your extended enterprise learning module the contingent workers who are in us right 
that thing you know also will come here since you know we are using extended enterprise learning for all the third party resources uh, instead of uh, getting uh, access for contingent workers in uh, the workday system let's get them into extended enterprise learning module so that you know okay. when we actually uh, implement it globally workday will actually anyways you know extended enterprise learning will go off then uh, all uh, uh, you know international employees who are not in workday will become employees in the workday during that time we'll actually release these uh, contingent workers you know in that uh, scenario you know company will be actually deciding to get into extended enterprise learning module and dump all extended resources into workday learning in a similar way they can actually push contingent workers also in that extended enterprise learning module so that sure. They can track all the completions. Yeah. Yeah. So extended enterprise and learning model uh, will enable extended employees who are part of the organization yeah. but not in workday yeah. will allow them to get into workday only for learning. Extended learning. enterprise learning will not provide any other access. Will provide only access to yeah. learning. Even they search anything in the search bar, nothing will come for them. At least for an yeah, employee, so you know, based on the security design for an employee, anything will come here. But for con uh, extended enterprise learner, only learning will come in the search bar, but nothing can be searched. Okay, so and I believe the cost price, cost wise also, uh, normal worker license and extended enterprise license will be a little bit lesser than normal worker license, right? Yes, definitely. You know, there is actually the outside of um, the workday subscription, right? And is it is not uh, you know kind of subscription which provide access to wide range of domains in workday. It is just for learning, okay? Just for learning domain, just for learning security group only. You know that piece will work, and it is it will be not um, you know cost as similar to as uh, how you know workday tenant will be costing or workday environment will be costing it is just a kind of a one module enabling to that particular just you know hardly i can say you know uh, uh, 10 percent or you know uh, will be a kind of additional cost to actually what you're implementing on learning the you mean 10 percent of a normal so this but licensing is as cost. per user is it user count Yes, so Workday will not provide um, to every customer who actually asks for uh, extended enterprise. So they will be actually defining this uh, subscription based on the headcount. So the customer for whom I have implemented, the cost of extended em employees was around, you know, 3,000, uh, 3,000, more than 3,000. So that was the reason why, you know, Workday has given a kind of subscription to that customer. But if you're having 10 members, 10 members in India, five mm -hmm. members in Australia, two members in Canada, for such kind yeah. of scenario, you know, Workday will not be granting this uh, the extended enterprise model. They have to use the normal yes. license and they have to buy, yes. forget, buy permissions. You yeah, have them as a contingent worker. Okay. In that scenario, so you need to actually define. So when you have uh, such like kind of five dollars per user, not like that. It is like a bulk uh, amount which Workday will fix based yes, on the headcount yeah. of the employees. Based on the headcount, yeah. Only if it is bulk, not for uh, you know below hundred or below thousand kind of. They have some kind of tagline restriction, so they will mm -hmm. be going with subscription based on that uh, headcount. Okay, okay, okay. Because in success factors, it was pay per user kind of a subscription. Mm -hmm. If you have 5000 employees, so okay. per user, it will be like this. And if it is one lakh, it will be like that. So it will per, per user, it is $5 or so something like some around that figure. Okay, uh, for a normal license. So here it will be a little bit different, I believe then different. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So in that scenario, you know, when you actually uh, have your um, contingent workers in your workday system as a contingent worker, so you need to mm. actually define a separate security group for them. Okay, so you need to actually oh. define some rules to them, so that contingent worker should not be able to access uh, any other um, domains in workday, and also uh, whatever learning administration should provide access to them, they should be able to access only that particular course. They will be not have, they will be restricted to go to any of the um, you know, employee related courses. Employee will be offered some specific courses to, you know, excel their skill set and all. Yeah. But contingent workers, you know, should not be provided to that access uh, to get into any course that is available in Workday, take that particular course. So that kind of restriction also should be there. So when you have um, contingent workers inbuilt within the Workday system, 
so there are some certain security setups you know, that you need to make where you'll be restricting contingent workers to access the learning catalog okay let's How say, do we so you'll be actually defining a security group uh, you know they'll be actually creating a, you know some roles in security group there is a, there are different ways uh, security group will be considering um, in, there is a security group called intersection security group okay so uh, for that learning access let me see so ideally in security group you can uh, 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 what do you say assign domains that means user will be able to search for courses but yes. what courses he can search that restriction? Uh, that courses you know, will be based on topics actually. It will be based on topic, mm -hmm. but uh, who have at domain level only will restrict uh, condition workers to, to access that piece of uh, area. So let's say if I select enter intersection security group. I'm just renaming just, you know, randomly. Mm. So here you have uh, kind of uh, what uh, security that you wanted to include. Okay. All employees. Mm. Mm. Okay. All employees. What security we wanted to exclude. So we'll be doing all condition workers. Okay. <clears throat> now, operate current organization only. Now, if you now one security group we've, we've created. You need to give any of the organization here. A home in the employees part of. Okay, so now you have created the security group where uh, it's just for either a security group to exclude organization or to exclude not. Intersection security group, okay? Yeah, intersection security group. So now you have included all employees, you've excluded contingent workers. Now go to any of the domain. <clears throat> all exclude all, exclude all contingent workers. Now, if you take any of the domain and if you assign this security group to any of the domain, what it will work based on the setup that you have made here to that particular domain all employees will be included and to the same domain all contingent workers will be excluded so the security group will exclude accessing contingent workers to that particular domain <clears throat> so employees will be part of for the entire domain right entire domain let's say if you wanted to actually take example as uh, <clears throat> campaigns okay camp <clears throat> <clears throat> campaign security group campaign domain is there okay now if you take the security group and go for campaign and if you assign this uh, security group to the campaign what will happen based on this uh, security setup security goes to include all employees will become a kind of uh, you know the permissions uh, will get permissions to access campaigns mm -hmm. and co contingent workers will be excluded to actually access campaigns because you are excluding from the domain that's what yeah. you're saying with the intersection intersection yeah what so, about uh, this browse learning co content so that is a domain is that a domain no browse learning content is not a domain that is a kind of self uh, self service task no self service learning related task so um, learning access is a kind of domain you know that will get you access to access browse learning content item okay so, so what learning access for example if I want to include only employees for browse learning content for some courses and I want to exclude contingent workers for browse learning content for some courses. 
okay in that scenario you will not be able to restrict them to access um, browser learning content because that is a domain you know that comes for learning access so you need to actually provide the learning access so that they can be able to access the browser learning content and when they search for courses only to the courses that they are allowed only those courses will come but rest of the courses should not come so what yeah, you will do in that scenario is uh, you'll mm. go at topic level you know at topic level you will be actually providing a kind of restriction so um, basically <clears throat> There will be a kind of standard report called uh, browse learning content, which is a kind of search report, I can say. Okay. Mm. That report will be actually getting um, all the list of courses available in tenant. And yeah. at that report level, you'll be actually filtering uh, that report to actually uh, filter the courses based on the, uh, the topic. <clears throat> actually, I'm finding to I'm finding that particular um, uh, report if uh, this tenant is actually having so that I should be able to show you how you can actually do that one. Okay, this domain is not yet configured with any of the thing. That's the reason why we are not able to access anything. Not domain, sorry, the dashboard. So which one? Based, which one is a dashboard? You're saying browse learning. Not learning. So learning is a kind of dashboard oh, in okay. which you know you'll be having uh, uh, browser learning all the items. You know you'll be adding here, mm -hmm. and employee will be able to access all those activities here. Oh. So you'll be having based on um, you know employee uh, you know access will be actually giving all these items to the learning. Also, see if there is any report created for learning browse learning content. Yeah, here you have browse you have see here. <clears throat> So based on this access uh, dashboard access employee will be able to get into browse and they will be able to browse uh, this particular uh, learning course. <clears throat> these are all the browse learning. All these are the things you know which are actually available for an employee. This dashboard is not configured. That's the reason why you're not able to see this one. Mm -hmm. Okay now. I'll be just creating this one and we'll be assigning to learning administrator. We'll show you how it works. Worklet, we don't have to configure. Worklet, we'll just not configure this one. Okay. We'll just have learning. Go to home.
Okay, learning is also a dashboard, is it? Learning is a kind of, uh, you know, within uh, home dashboard, you can configure any other dashboards, if you, which you wanted to populate on home page. Mm -hmm. For now, generally, uh, employees will be part of uh, learning, so we'll, learning administrator will not be part, because um, employee will be able to access their self own task now. Mm. And even contingent workers, if I want to, yeah, add. if you want, you can actually add so okay, that contingent okay. workers will be getting access to learning. But again, this will give access to both of them to having to uh, have access to browse learning catalog. Browse learning that I said now, but browse learning is a kind of report that we have at report yeah. level. You know, you can actually play around um, to actually restrict which topic should be handled by employee, which topic should be you know accessed by contingent worker. All those things we can uh, uh, control in report so that when employee gets into uh, browse learning, uh, there you know they'll be having a kind of control. Uh, if contingent worker will be getting access to all the topics that are provided, but for an employee, they can access uh, as per their security. You know whatever they have okay so that they'll be having um basically this learning is not uh you know configured to any of the you know from domain level you know we need to actually get in the scenario you know, we can actually play around with all those things at report level you can actually control uh, So basically dashboard setups you know will be coming based on the profile you know that will be you'll be getting a list of um, uh, you know from business that uh, this is the employee group who should be having access to this worklet and this is the employee group who should not have access to worklet kind of requirement you know you're uh, you'll be getting during implementation during that implementation stage you know you'll be setting up mm -hmm. If there are certain domains you know, that will be giving access to that learning dashboard. Okay. So that automatically, when uh, you're assigning to the self service task in the dashboard, automatically the security will be coming uh, into the picture. Self service learning. Mm. This domain um, provide access to the worker to view their um, transcript. <clears throat> Not this one, there should be some other thing. Which will be getting access to learning dashboard. Mm -hmm. Set up learning. Uh, this is also one learning catalog, you know, which will provide access. System. Yeah, this is one thing. Basically, this provide this domain will allow her to access uh, this policy is not enabled. You need to actually take care of that thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, this tenant was used to provide learning training earlier. That's the reason why nothing is configured here. And that's good actually. We are doing everything. Mm -hmm.
Okay, first we have to enable. Okay. The status is still suspended. Policy not enabled. Yeah, once you add any kind of security group and activate that one, you will be able to see that the status is enabled. this thing Now, if you access the domain, setup mm -hmm. learning will be activated now. The domain mm -hmm. is enabled. You are not seeing any restrictions here. See, it's got activated. So the moment you actually pick that one earlier you are seeing uh, the domain was not actually enabled right now you see that was actually oh it is actually coming again so setup learning means what 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 exactly does it do uh, this, this is actually domain this admin provides access to administrative to manage security sequence to learning catalog this is for administrators yeah, this is something you know for where learning administrator can access. Sir. See, even after changing, it still still says status suspended. No, 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 no. This is not the domain which we act which we activated. Or else we wouldn't have seen that one. This is not the domain. This is the domain actually which we have seen. <laughs> Similarly, we have to enable learning catalog also, no? Yes, same. same. Everything, you know, whatever you know, you need to have. You know, see, based on that, what we have done, it is got enabled. <clears throat> so, whatever you know, the list of domains you actually pick um, you know, when you are actually implementing. Uh, obviously, to any of the domain, you need to assign the security. You no, know? when you are actually mm -hmm. assigning the security at the initial stage of assigning the security, what you need to do, you'll be actually, um, uh, you'll make that the domain as enable. You'll uh, assign that um, the, you know, domain as a particular list in the domain list of low workday learning. You'll mark that domain as a kind of enabled domain and then mm -hmm. add any of the security groups that you wanted to get into that particular domain. Then activate mm -hmm. that one. After you activate that one, you'll start using that particular domain to the security groups that you have assigned. And from there, security permissions becomes effective. From there, you know, mm -hmm. your employees or any kind of administrators or uh, any kind of users, you know, will be getting permissions as per the security domain access that you have provided. Mm -hmm. So at the initial stage of implementation, obviously, you need to actually, you know, you'll be provided with a list of domains which you need to provide uh, or start, you know, allocating to those security groups and start, uh, you know, uh, accessing those particular domain areas. So there, you know, you'll be actually uh, enabling those modules first, you know, when you're actually implementing. But since, you know, this tenant, um, I think, you know, learning is the first uh, kind of setup mm. that we are making now, I believe. And that's the reason why none of the modules are getting enabled so we are making uh, them enabled and we are start uh, we are starting you know to assign these to particular security groups and that's the reason why you are seeing so the process is if those are not enabled you'll be not able to view them actually so those domain mm -hmm. areas will not be accessible so you need to mark them as enable assign the security group activate them and start using them that's it okay 
now uh, let me you know kind of assess you you know based on the um, uh, domains and security how we have uh, discussed now let's say if yeah. you are um, you know if you are actually implementing um, any workday learning model or if you are supporting um, as a kind of uh, you know super user for workday learning okay if there is any security issue if employee comes and uh, you know reaches out to you i'm not able to view my transcript uh, uh, you know for some reason i'm not able to download my transcript or view my transcripts what you'll do Mm. First, we will uh, search as to which security group he belongs to. Yes, exactly. And uh, uh, view, and we have to view, view the security group and uh, see what all domains that security group has access to. Yeah. First, other way is um, see the go to that particular uh, learning setup or learning access uh, domain and see whether the security group that employees associate is part of this domain or not. Okay, in that way, you know, mm -hmm. we can actually identify and uh, you know grant that uh, domain access if uh, that particular domain is not associated with the user that employee is associated. So, what is the task for that uh, view security? Oh, no, go to that particular domain only. Let's say now I have okay. uh, I told you learning access. No, uh -huh. learning. Okay. So here, self-service learning task is there. Mm -hmm. Here, the domain provide access to the worker to view their learning transcript. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you need to actually go to this uh, learning domain and see whether the security group that employee is associated with is part of this domain or not. Okay. Yeah. You'll see here. But first, we have to find out what security group the employee is. With, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, what security group that employees associated? We need to know. And uh, obviously, you know, since this view learning uh, transcript is a kind of self-service task, uh, mm -hmm. which employee every employee should have access. So, you need mm -hmm. to see whether that employee as self a kind of uh, you know the, the security group mm -hmm. is added to this list or not. Okay. Mm -hmm. In that way, you'll be able to identify. Let's say if contingent worker comes to you and asks you, you know, uh, I'm not able to view complete learning. Okay, I'm not able to access mm -hmm. learning. If contingent mm -hmm. worker comes to you and asks, so you need to actually go to learning access domain. Okay, learning access yeah. domain and see whether contingent worker is enabled for that one or not. So yeah. you go to this learning access. <clears throat> What is will is provide access to learning self service tasks. Complete learning self service tasks. This is the domain will be mm -hmm. accessed. You'll be going here and you'll be seeing um, whether contingent workers is added to the list or not. Mm -hmm. That's it. Here you'll be identifying. And if it's not, you'll add contingent workers and make sure that uh, uh, learners will be able to access uh, a learning application. Contingent workers will be able to access learning. But if you wanted to restrict uh, contingent workers in accessing the specific courses okay. and um, you know only employees should be able to access only specific courses, that you can manage through topics, you know, which we'll be seeing uh, in our you know upcoming sessions. So at, at okay. topic level, how you can restrict uh, security and all we'll be seeing in our upcoming session.